the six key agronomic principles that we want to talk about when we talk about a planter, in order of importance is one, plant to proper depth. Two is plant uniform depth across the width of the machine and throughout your field. Number three is to have good soil to seed contact. And number four is to have uniform soil pressure. And then number five is to have accurate population. And number six, to have good in-row seed spacing. Today we're gonna to talk about the first four. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about an agronomic design and the agronomic design principles that go behind the early riser planner. Here's a conventional row unit. This is the early riser row unit. And initially what we'll be showing is the differences on how it goes through the soil. One thing that you can't see here is that you have an offset disc. That offset disc slices instead of pokes residue into the ground. And as we look at it, what that means is we can have a narrower seed trench. You'll notice a furrow forming point which will help eliminate bulk soil in the bottom of the seed trench. Behind it, you're going to find a shoe. That shoe acts as a seed cage. It protects the seed to make sure that it can get all the way down to the bottom of the seed trench. Now what we're going to do is lower the, the row units into the ground and show you the different soil profiles that you get with the various different row units. This row unit represents a deer, Kinsey, White, Monosem, Great Plains, basically uh, a conventional style row unit. And obviously the early riser row unit is on the other side. You can see that there's two very distinctive differences in the soil profiles of the seed trenches. Let's start with the Case IH soil profile that you get behind the row unit. As you look in the seed trench itself, you're not going to see any bulk soil at the bottom of the seed trench. As you walk and look at the other side, what you're going to find is that the bulk soil is still in the seed trench itself. What we would find is that we'd have, in this case, almost three quarters of an inch of bulk <laughs> soil at the bottom of the seed trench. If you ask a customer whether or not he would be satisfied with a three quarters of an inch depth variation in his plant stand if on a surface this flat, and his response would be obviously no. This bulk soil has to be dealt with. And of course, we deal with it with our furrow forming point. That furrow forming point looks like this. It goes through the soil, eliminates the bulk soil before the seed even gets down to into the trench. The shoe, which you see right here, is that protective cage that protects the seed and keeps the seed trench open so the seed can get all the way down so that it's uniformly placed. So our mesocotyl length remains uniform all the way down the seed row so that as a result when it pops out of the ground your leaf stage and the uniform height of the plant and the uniform growth of the plant is going to give you a more productive stand. The early riser row unit is zero indexed. So if I put my uh, indicator knob on six in this particular situation and go down 24 rows and set that knob to the same location every one of my planter row units will be planting the same depth across the width of the machine. You have to look at the format of this profile over here. You notice it's flat. You notice that uh, in our modeling soil, it's pushing along versus our side, which is working itself and floating down the seed trench. We're using a pulled gauge wheel. This makes this row unit much more stable. It can go through the field faster, and it keeps the depth more uniform. It has two humps on the side of the row unit that you see right here, versus a flat surface that you see over there. That is the result of these two reduced radius gauge wheels, and it has a storage group for soil right here. That soil is then trapped as it comes out of the seed trench and parked along the seed trench itself. That soil will be the soil that we use to cover the seed. They have a push gauge wheel, and the way their system works is as the soil comes out, what happens is it pulls it out 
and traps it and smashes it down on the top of the seed trench. So it takes almost a third of an inch of soil and crushes it up against the side of the seed trench. So they use a compaction system to hold the seed trench open. We use that shoe to hold that seed trench open. The other thing is the tire profile that you want to look at the seed trench. Notice that we carry the weight of the planter and the weight of the row unit almost two inches away from the edge of the seat trench. Over there, we have a solid gauge wheel and it carries the weight right up to the edge of the seat trench so that they can create that rigid sidewall on the seat trench to keep it open long enough to get the seed down. On that kind of system, that vector goes down to the bottom of the seat trench. Now what that means in terms of agronomics is that a young plant just sprouting, trying to get out of the ground, only has between 120 to 150 PSI capability of pushing its head out of the ground and its roots down. And then after it's done that, then it has some more vigor and has the ability of approximately 450 PSI to run the roots down through those different pressure vectors. In the early riser system, what you find is that plant can establish itself, get its head out of the ground, and then have that 450 PSI capability so that you can get that plant up and have the power to drive down through the various different conditions that it faces in real world applications. On the other side though, we don't have that luxury because that plant has to start going through a pressure vector or a compaction vector immediately. If it is damp when it starts and dries out quickly, what you're going to find is the root and the seedling can't get through that compact, compacted layer. It struggles to get up. We use a two-stage closing system. Remember that uniform soil pressure that we're going after, we're going to take this and we're going to create the same soil pressure on the side of the seed as we did at the base of the seed trench. So you don't have that gap that you get with a, a one-stage closing system. Now what's important to understand about that is this soil that we have right here is the last soil out of the seed trench. Okay? So that means it's moist soil. Then it becomes the first soil that goes back in over the seed. Now that gives us the ideal situation for germination. And that results then in having good soil to seed contact all the way around the seed and also moist soil around the seed. Then the last portion of that process, of our two safe closing process, is that we bring the tire, a zero pressure press wheel, over the top and seal all the air pockets out of it and again work at giving us uniform soil pressure. At the end, this chevron tread gives us a stress crack that in crusting soils, the seed can pop up and the soil is going to crack there. It allows you to get this up out of the ground and pop up even in a crusting soil or a heavy rain situation. And you'll find with an early riser planter, the need to replant in those kinds of severe conditions go down immensely because of this concept. What you see right here is that this is a zero pressure. Uh, it goes over, it's not creating compaction, it's, it's firming. Right over the top of the seed, there's no obstruction. And of course the tire then is flexing However, on either side, you're gonna see two cleats. Those cleats give us a nice straight push down on the side of the seed trench so you have that uniform seed pressure all the way around the seed. And we have 43 test side-by-side uh, -side comparisons through six different states and 163,000 plant measurements. And what we've found is that on a 35,000 population of corn per acre, that means you have 2,000 more plants per acre being more productive. That represents somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 14 bushel an acre. Well, let's be conservative. If it's 10 bushel an acre at $7 corn, that's $70 an acre. And if you have 1,000 acres, that's $70,000. And even if it gets a dry year and your, and your yield goes down, it could mean the difference between profit and loss.